Hey and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we'll look at the Golden Mate Orion 1000. Orion 1000. You might know Golden Mate has a couple other batteries. Um, another 100 amp hour lithium ion phosphate 12 volt battery. This is also 12 volt 100 amp hour but it is a different casing. And in this video we'll talk about this particular battery and we'll review it. Let's get started. As I mentioned, this battery is a little different. So what we're having here is a plastic housing. This is the Orion 1000. And the Orion 1000 does come with a user manual, does come with communication ports. So the communication ports are over here and those are the cables for it. And I was told you can, for example, connect them in parallel and then connect them and let them speak to each other with those cables. And there are two different ones. One has two pre-finished endings and the other one is an open end so you could use it for a shunt for example i would assume and then it comes with some locks additional ones uh, in gouge eight it also comes with those protective orange oh, there we go plastic protectors what's also really cool talking about it it does come with a display so we'll touch base on all these other specifications as always this is the battery we'll talk about all the specification possible which makes this outstanding and different from other batteries and why I think already at the beginning of the test, this might be a really cool battery. So specification first, capacity test, then we'll tear it apart and look inside how the quality is. So the Golden Mate Orion 1000 is a lithium ion phosphor battery, 12 volt, 100 amp hours. They do claim, well, they don't claim, it does have LCD display on top. It also has a 100 amp hour BMS, IP67 waterproof. That's what they say, it's lightweight, high energy. It should weigh around 30 pounds. And the communication cables I showed you here refers to communication line that communicates with the current battery, while parallel connection wire refers to the communication line that connects to the next battery parallel connection, which is pretty cool. So let's continue with uh, more specification about this battery. So they do say it does come with great A cells, a 10 year lifespan. We heard it a lot, so I cannot test the 10 year lifespan. It has a built in 100 amp BMS. It has an overcharging, over discharging, over current, short circuit, and high temperature protection. This is the weight again and the dimensions. And you can configure it um, and extend it up to 4S or 4P to get maximum 400 amp hour capacity or maximum 51.2 volts. Communication ports are front here. So since it's IP67 rated, you can take those off. You do have, and I'll get you a close up in a second as well. You have um, also those rubber thingies all over where they use bolts. It is a fully plastic housing, plastic, plastic, but it's, uh, it looks like divided in two pieces. So the lower and the upper. And I hope I can take it apart later pretty easy. That would be great without destroying everything. The LCD display still protected here. I still have not taken it off, but I will take it off for you. I can reach it. There we go. Ooh, there we go. Brand new. Nice. You can use your finger and then you do enable this display. So here you touch it and that's how you turn it on and turn it off. It does go in standby on its own. It just lights up and dims down or turns off. And it has, has some functionality, which we hopefully can see in a little bit when we do uh, pull some power out and also when we charge this device and uh, see what the display shows. Maybe also when we do our high temp tests, maybe there's a low temp test as well, but it's not advertised as much as I saw at least online. So it means I will start my Shaoxing Electric app. So I do have a couple batteries and you can see we have the Orion 1000. I renamed it already because I wanted to know which one is which. But you can connect with this app to it and then you should see. Yes, exactly. That's what you should see. Let me. There we go. So we are at 91%. We're at 91% on the app as well. And you can see the individual cells. It looks like there are five temperature sensors inside. So we'll see if that's something I can see at all. The voltage, you can change a few parameters, but only do that if you know what you're doing and you have the controls to stop charging and start charging with this app, which is amazing. 
Okay, what I didn't tell you, there is a Golden Mate app, and let me show you. This Golden Mate app looks like this, so right now when you click on Orion 1000, as mentioned, I renamed it already in the other app, so that's why I was able to rename it. You can see 92%, you can see the voltage, you can see the information, kind of we also saw in the other one. Not for the individual cells, but you see also the temperature in this one. It looks like there are five sensors, and you can see in the video later, because I afterwards recorded and realized, wait, I took the video from the wrong app. Anyways, this is the app, it's very limited, you can change Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Bluetooth, that's pretty much it, and then you can click on Gold Mate and you see more information about the company itself, that's all. So there's not a lot more to it. Um, charging state, discharging state you would see here as well, same like you see on the display, but I wanted to highlight they have their own app. I think this is a pretty good user manual, you have the QR code to scan um, also your app. Everything you need basically in this little manual, it looks good, it looks solid, let me see if I see, yeah here up front that's where we have specification about the battery and it says um, charge parameters, rated charge current is 20 amp, maximum charge current, oh interesting, it's 50 amp. And the discharge parameters, rated discharge current, it's rated up to 120 amps. Interesting, it did say um, up to 100 amp BMS, so we'll see what's inside. And the maximum continuous discharge current is 150 amp, up to five minutes. Whoa, discharge cutoff voltage is a 10.4, all right. Then of course, temperature parameters, charge temperature, lithium ion phosphate specific, yeah, zero degree Celsius, not below. And then there are some certifications I didn't talk about. Cool, all right, that's pretty much all about it. I would say we'll take this little friend do the capacity test and come back with that. Okay, so we are doing the test with the Golden Mate Orion 1000. You can see I did connect already everything, so we are ready to go. I just took off the charger, so it's freshly up and charged. Let me show you something. Here we have the display, it's hard to read. Oh, because of the reflection, sorry. Hope that's something. So let me start everything and kick on the inverter. You might be able to see already the first movement here. There we go, and we can see it says output and it is discharging. It should be around 25 amps. The capacity test officially started for the Orion 1000 from GoldenMate. I'll get back to you as soon as we've done the capacity test that we have results in. So I'll see you in a few. So we're getting pretty close. I mean, we are at the end already. You can see we pulled already 104 amp hours out of this battery. Let's give it a couple more seconds and see how much it can drop to 10.5-ish. Then we should stop because this battery really is outstanding in its capacity, to be honest. This is, this is amazing. I did not expect this, but this is really outstanding, amazing battery, at least in terms of capacity. I don't know what's inside, but we'll take a look in it in a minute. So for capacity, pure capacity, this is probably the best I've seen in a long time, which is so nice and refreshing. Okay, I think uh, we can slowly call it 105 amp hours and still more. As mentioned, this is outstanding. I'm really happy this battery did pass the capacity test. Easy. I'll stop here and then we'll continue and then we'll continue um, with the disassemble of the battery. Pause for a second, let's try mm -hmm. to look more in depth in this, di in this display. For those kind of things, I like to use the little CD battery charger, which is up to 30 amp. And we'll also take a look what happens in the display. And so far, there we go. It does turn on its display on its own without me touching anything. Let's see if we can turn it off. And if you don't like that, you can turn it off. But it does come on on its own, so it means let me take this one off. Let me put it back on. So as soon as it does charge again, display comes on. So keep that in mind, this display comes on and off. Even maybe you don't want to have it on all the time. Just something to be aware of. We're charging with, yeah, it's set to 20 amp at the moment, sorry. I didn't set it to 30, so looks like 20.4 which is equal to this watt. And then at one point it just stops, it looks like. That's good, so, it, I mean, the display turns off. Good to see, right? And by the way, 20.4, 
times 12 is 244 or 245 watts. According to BMS, we're charging with more. Quite interesting. Okay, I've connected a little pure sine wave inverter uh, with up to 600 watts, so very small, very minor. You can see the display, I'm turning, let me turn off the display first. Display's off. I'll start the inverter. And yep, it's up to, I don't know, it's a 200 watt little heat I'm just started. And right now, display is not coming on when you discharge something. But you can see here is the output. And 223, 224, and on we do have around 16.9, almost 17 amps going out. So that's kind of what we're discharging right now. Just to give you an idea of what's happening. And you can see the display is turning off on its own again. That's kind of the behavior, so you know what to expect. Next step will be the disassemble of this battery. So it means I'll take it off. Hopefully it's not too difficult. If not, well, for you it will be no time. I'll just get started and come back. The only thing I had to do, get those rubber gaskets out and they are Philip head screws and then you can just lift it up. Okay. Oh, that looks like high tech. All right, it does have some smell to it. I disconnected. From those two, just the wires. It looks like this wire over here is for the display up there. This one is for the communication port and they are in series connected up there. And then we have, that is a quite interesting connection. We'll see. So we do have up there two eight gauge wires for the negative and also two eight gauge wires for the positive. Going to the terminal, they're clued and kind of insulated in that regard. And then we have a, it looks like a big BMS. And that big BMS, let me try to see what I need to do so we can lift it up or out. And also what you can see here up front, we do have temperature sensors. It looks like one, two, three, four, I would assume. That's what we see here probably. But yeah, let me get closer to it. It does look like when you look here on those bolt or screw heads, they are all kind of marked kind of that they did torque it, maybe, or at least some quality check, maybe. So it does say it has great A cells, right? It doesn't say anything about cylindric or prismatic cells as much as I see in here, so they are pretty free to select what they want. That's fine with me, because when you look from the side, which I try to do, here we go, you can see They have cylindric cells in here, uh, in a good plastic housing, so they feel like solid. It's not moving around, it looks like. That's good. And I would assume that the bus bars go over here, those big things. And yeah, actually the bus bars are underneath here, this entire plastic on both sides. I don't want to rip it off completely because I feel like this is a very solid construction and I'm really happy what I see here. We have one, two, three, four. Uh, temperature sensors, we'll um, take them out. We'll do the high temp test with those ones as well. We'll test the low temp and see if there's something triggering. Uh, it's just on one side. I don't want to overstretch it too much, but this is the other side and you can see underneath there are those bus bars basically. And they all congregate and go up to here. So one must be positive, the other one must be negative. That's good, those wires. I think they go through. Um, that's what I don't see. And that is, that is very nice, <laughs> to be very honest. This is a good setup. And also I want to highlight here, we have a rubber seal in the, or rubber gasket in the lid itself. So the IP67, when we bolt it together later, it will still have the same functionality, which is good to see. So I like, I really like what I see here. I don't want to bore you too much. This is the um, BMS. It's pretty big, um, but it has also a heat sink up here. I'm not sure um, if that is actually a serial number, but I don't know what the manufacturer here is as well. But all in all, pretty nice what you can see here. Let me plug in the display really quick again. 
just want to see if it does this uh, connect again. Of course. Yeah, 91%. We are back online. That's cool. Uh, the communication port is not as necessary, but what I want to do, we'll connect it anyways. What I want to do is now making sure that we can test those little friends. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow, that it goes in pretty far. Oh, sorry, you didn't even see what I was doing, but down here, I just took away the tapes and they all were just placed inside like this, but they were glued and um, fixed with the tape. And when the tape is off, you can just take them out of those holes, which is so funny. Okay, so I have set it up charging over here. You can see it's charging with 10.2 amps. Um, it's blurry because I'm actually focusing on the display because I want to see what happens on the display and I hope you can see it as well. I'm now taking all those different temperature sensors and I'll start with one and the heat gun. So we'll see what's happening here. You can see it stopped. On the display itself, it said it's too hot. Good to see, all right. Let's see when it comes back, what it does. It's charging, oh, it just charges back. Let's try another one. That's the second, by the way. Oh, it does already trigger. Wow, yeah, <laughs> impressive. It's still the overheating sign there. You can see it's hard to see right now. And it's going back to charge. There's too much reflection, I think, from the side. I hope that's better. Let me use the, the third temperature sensor. And it says it's hot. And then the display turns off so quick. Not even that quick, but it's also stopped charging over here. Let me cool this one down as well. So you, all of them individually work as soon as, as soon as one triggers. Let's see the last one. Yep, should be able to see it. And here it is again. And it stopped charging. Pretty nice. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Let me cool this down real quick again. There we go. And it does charge again. Let me get a cool pack. All right. It's still charging. I'll use couple cool pads. Let's just start with one of those temperature sensors and see what happens on um, cool pack. This time it's just a cool pack because last time um, when I used the duster, sorry about that from this video up there. Oh, whoa, it stopped. Nice. Sorry, I'm still telling you a story in a second. Nice, look at this. And it starts again. Let me try one more of those temp sensors. I'm trying the second one in the middle. Last time I did the duster, of course, it's way, way colder than cool pad. I know that. But I used the duster um, because I did a mistake. I did test it before and then I changed my setup. So be before I did use one of those cool pads, afterwards I used the duster and I didn't mention that I was stupid. But here again, nice. That is so cool to see and I'm so happy to see it because this, I did not know. I didn't see any advertisement for this one. And charged again. This is so cool. So cold temp cut off with those cool pads does work this is an amazing sorry battery i think that this is really good let me know if you need anything else to see because uh, it's pretty easy to take it apart and put it back together this one is a reusable reusable battery which is amazing which is so cool to see and i'm so happy about this because i can just put it together and uh, put it to work and maybe get uh, three more of this and have it in a parallel or serious connection and the bms will talk to each other which is the best setup you can imagine in my opinion because they have communication ports so they can actually work together instead of you have just the battery with bms individually and then you connect them series or parallel they don't talk to each other so they might still be off but those batteries can actually talk to each other and balance themselves so they get the maximum possible output at the end which is so cool all right um i think the video is long enough let me summarize it Okay, this Orion 1000 is actually a quality battery in my opinion. I mean, you can see it here, you saw the build quality. Um, it uses screws over uh, silicone or some glue, which is amazing. It does have 
everything you can imagine. Of course, this is the price and it's a little more pricey, but it has communication ports, IP67 rated, and you can take it apart, maintenance in case you need it. Of course, there's also a warranty from the manufacturer as always. The question is always how long are they on the market? Will they be in the market in five years if there is something happening? Who knows? It's a plastic housing, keep that in mind. It's not aluminum, it looks cool. It really looks sturdy and I like it. So um, I would like to know from you guys, what do you think about this battery? Is there anything else you want to have tested? As always, if not, like the video if everything's good. And feel free to sub subscribe to the channel because one of those batteries that would be cool to have because you have the communication ports. Have this one connected to a Victron system with no dread? Hey, that would be even better. So thanks for watching. Tschüss.